Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'm gonna to show you three ways of doing some custom cool transitions. Let's go. How is it going guys? And welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that wanna shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Hey everybody, how's it going? Dave here, I hope everybody's doing well. This video is brought to you by Envato Elements, but we'll talk about that a bit later. Today I wanna to show you guys three different ways of achieving a custom transition. One of those transitions that you don't know where it's coming from, it catches your views by surprise. Let's dive straight in. Now, right here, I've got two clips. Now, if I play the two clips back to back, they look great, they look cool, but we're just gonna add some sauce to that. What I'm gonna be doing is based around the same kind of thing, but I'm gonna be using different techniques to achieve this. So you can kind of pick and choose which one suits you. So right where the overlap is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this frame. So I'm just gonna export it, make sure it's going to where my photos are. See that? And what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna go to where my picture is, and I'm gonna open that in Photoshop. So as I'm looking at this photo, what I'm really looking at is shapes I can remove in order to make the transition onto the next clip. First, I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come up here and use the object selection tool, select the object, and these three things are in the way. So I'm gonna press shift and then select those, and I'm gonna right click and then select the mask. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure this goes onto a new layer and that's created a new layer. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to go to the lasso tool and I'm just gonna cut this square out. You can be pretty rough for this one. And right there, I'm just gonna delete that. And as you can see, I've got the layer on top and this what I've got right here, really easy to do. If you wanna go any further, you can use the magic wand and go around this and refine that. But it's gonna be a really quick transition, so I don't know how long you wanna spend on that. So that looks really cool. I'm gonna go up and export it as a PNG. And then I'm gonna take that photo and pop it right there. And what I need to do is animate this. So if I go to my position up here and animate that, you kinda of get a preview of what it looks like. I'm gonna take my transform tool because the transform tool will allow us to add some blur to it. I'm gonna come to this point right here, add some keyframes for position. Gonna check this box right here and go to 150. Gonna move a few frames. And then I'm gonna move that down. So I've, I get this kind of transition. I'm gonna go a step further and to the first keyframe, I'm gonna add an ease out and then ease in. Just so I get a bit more of a natural movement there. And then when that moves, I'm gonna add a transform tool to the photo. And what I want this photo to do is zoom in and then out of frame. So we'll see how much Premiere allows us to zoom in on this. So right around there, that's disappeared. Gonna add a keyframe to the photo. So I'm gonna add a keyframe for position and scale, move along five frames and then zoom in. That's about right. After a certain point, you start getting an error because Premiere has a problem with when you like blow things up a bit too much. So right around there, that's fine. I'm just gonna cut that right there and then add a cross dissolve. And that's a bit static. I'm gonna add some blur to that. Ease out on the first keyframes, ease in on the second ones. And let's see what we've got. So that was pretty cool right there. It's one of those transitions you don't really expect. Just to sell it a bit more, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this transition shake it's a really short shake but what it does is really sells the effect these are transitions you can pick up from Envato elements they've got tons of stuff motion graphics i use them all the time and they've been a lifesaver for some client work that i've been doing lately so definitely check them out you get your first month for nine dollars check it out in the description and this is what you get it really sells the effect now another way of achieving the same kind of thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to just copy those two clips over by pressing option and dragging and I'll keep them overlapping. So this is what you've got. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing, but this time around, I am gonna mask it. Now the positive thing about this is it might take a bit of time, but what we'll do is it'll maintain some kind of movement. Whereas before you get a static photo and it really looks, I mean, the shake sells it, but you get a static photo and you can tell it's a photo, nothing moves. It might come a bit unnatural to the eye, the next way might be a bit more tedious, but you might maintain a bit of that natural movement. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a cut right there. We're gonna duplicate the clip by pressing option and dragging up. And on the top clip, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to my opacity right here 
and I'm going to use the mask to just mask the window out. Try to be as detailed as you can. So when you're done, you should get something like this. I've masked out the window and then that bottom clip is the one that's going to move. So I'm going to go into my transform, keyframe it, use composition shot angle. So make sure that box is ticked. Go to 150. That's about right for the blurriness. I'm going to move five frames and then I'm going to move down. So that looks cool. So as you can see, it maintains some of that movement. And because it's moving quite fast, I'm not going to worry about these bits right here. I mean, you can go in and put a second mask in, but for now, I'm not going to do that. Now, after this is moved down, we want this clip right here to zoom in so we can bring it out of frame. Now, the weird thing about it is because the transform tool is below opacity, if I try to zoom in, it's going to do this weird thing because it's trying to mask that other clip. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two clips. I'm going to nest them. And then I'm going to add a transform effect to the nest. And then when I zoom this in, as you can see, it's going to maintain that mask and give us a smooth transition. So after the clips go down, I'm going to take it from about here. Keyframe position, scale, move five frames. And the way I'm doing that is pressing shift and the right arrow. Use composition shutter angle. 200 should be all right. Then I'm gonna move it there and then a bit to the right. And right around there, I'm just gonna fade it out with a cross dissolve. So let's see what that looks like. Now it's a bit too static. What I need to do is come back here, make sure the first keyframes have ease out and then the second keyframes have ease in. Let's see what that looks like. The difference between the two transitions we've already done. You can kind of see the difference between movement in between the transition. It depends on the style you're going for. I think both work really well. And then again, I'm going to take the shake right here. I'm going to option drag it into place just to sell the effect a bit more. And after you add your shake and your blur, it's kind of a seamless transition. Unless you're pixel peeping and take it frame by frame. But yeah, that's a cool way of doing it. Now, let me show you the third way of doing this. I'm transitioning from this shot of this money and this clip right here. Both clips are stock video clips I've picked up from Volta Elements. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to want to transition from this $10 bill. I want this to kind of animate out and then into the next clip. Now, because it's moving, I don't want to mask it. So what I'm going to do is right around here, I'm going to chop that clip up, make a duplicate, and then I'm going to right click and then replace with After Effects composition. Yes, we are going into After Effects. Don't worry. This is going to be easy and shouldn't strain your computer too much because we're only editing like 10 or 15 frames. So it shouldn't be too bad. We got the money shot right here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to double click. I'm going to rotoscope this part out. Now we've done tons of videos on rotoscoping. Josh has done an amazing job. Check out the videos where he goes into detail about rotoscoping. And then another company that does rotoscoping really well is Runway ML, all web-based, really smart, ridiculous stuff they do. So check them out as well. Normally, if I was doing longer clips, I would probably use Runway because it is faster and it doesn't put too much strain on my computer. I'm only doing a few frames, so doing it in After Effects just makes sense because I can just use Dynamic Link. So that's about right there. Pretty happy with that. Freeze that. It's only 19 frames, so it shouldn't take too long to do. That's great. So it's isolated the money. Now what I'm going to do is, because I want the money to come out of frame, I need to invert that selection. So I'm going to go into FX control. I've got Herman to think about this. Instead of going up to FX and choosing your effect, just use FX control, select your layer FX control, and I'm going to go into invert alpha. And that's going to invert that ready for us to take that clip out. If I go into Premiere, that's all ready to go. This is why I love Dynamic Link. When it works, it works really well. I want this clip underneath to be the one that's moving. So if I just test it right here, if I move it, this is the kind of thing I get. Now, I do get a bit of a border here, but because of the blur and the motion, I can kind of get away with that. Let's add transform effect onto the bottom clip, keyframe, position, and scale. We'll see if we need scale. Shutter angle, about 200. Then we'll move five frames and then move down. And this is the transition I get. And then I'm going to move the clip of the wrapper underneath. You can kind of see them right there. And then I want this top clip to, again, zoom in. So I'll add a transform effect to that one. 
position scale, collect that box 200 is about right. Move five frames and then, and because the clip is moving right there, I'm gonna fade out right around there when it's out of frame or you just cut the clip right there. Again, the movement is a bit static. I'm gonna right click, ease out, ease in. Add that shake to sell the effect. What you can also do is kind of do that in reverse. So I'm going to take the sequence right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this clip right here, move that to the beginning. And then I'm going to take this right here, this movement. I'm going to nest that. And then I'm going to right click and then reverse it. Go into speed and duration and then reverse that. And then move this clip to where it overlaps a bit and you get something like this. And then we'll just add the shake where it kind of makes sense in the transition point. So there you have it, three ways of adding custom transitions to your videos. I've seen heaps of those in vlogs, music videos, and it kind of keeps you on your toes if you're a viewer. I know we dove into After Effects a bit. Herman's got an amazing video of After Effects for beginners. Highly encourage you guys to check that out. And you'll find out that After Effects isn't that scary. So let's go through some comments. A lot of you guys enjoyed the paper transition video, which I'm stoked about because it took a bit of time, but I'm really happy that it added value. Let's go read some comments. Ricardus T says, dude, this lesson is OP. Thanks for sharing with us. I don't know what OP is. What's OP? <laughs> Original poster? Is that what it means? Anyways, I'm glad you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Untap TV, I definitely dig this tutorial. Sandy Comedy, we need color grading tutorials. Yes, we do. Actually, Quinn did a video about how to match cameras using Cinemax and great app. Check it out, check the video out. It's on the channel. A lot of you guys have been enjoying Josh's series about the AI websites for lazy editors. Let's go read some of those comments. Nope says, this is absolutely wild. I feel like I need to step up my game now that so many of these long tedious processes are automated now. I still feel like it's important to know how to do these things on your own as well. Absolutely, I totally agree with this because AI is out. It makes tedious tasks a lot easier, but at the same time, it's good to know how to do them yourself. Thanks for watching the video guys. Subscribe, like, that really helps the channel out. If you got any suggestions for future videos, drop them in the comments. Check out the Envato link in the description. It's $9 for your first month. Stupidly ridiculous deal. If you want to say hi to me personally, Dave the Greco is my IG handle on Instagram. Until next time guys, peace.